Hi guys, welcome to my channel, Windsor Medals. My name's Paul. Thanks so much for checking out this video today. I hope you're all well. So I intend to put a lot of uh, content in my channel in the future of tailoring jobs, but I thought it'd be a good idea to actually learn basic tailoring stitches first for any of you guys that want to have a go or you guys that are actually just interested to learn about these stitches. So the most important stitch we use as a tailor, or one of the most important stitches, is a stitch called basting stitch. So basically, basting stitch is a temporary stitch. It's just used for holding bits of material or parts of garments together temporarily before they're actually machine stitched or hand sewn. So as a military tailor, we use this stitch a lot. For example, if we're putting some chevrons on a uniform, we'll baste the chevrons down first so it holds them nice and tight, and then we'll machine stitch round or hand sew round the chevron or you can use it with a badge, I'll demonstrate in a minute. Or if we've got a construction, if you imagine this was two bits of trouser leg, and these are two seams, you'd use a stitch just to temporarily hold the seams together. Or any other garment construction pockets, anything, or jackets. So if you had a bespoke um, suit made, on the process of the making and the manufacturing of that soup, they have absolutely tons and tons of basting stitch um, in the garment before it's all properly sewn down. I mean, basically, it's like if you imagine you build a house, it's like the scaffolding, really. Then once you've built the house or finished the jacket, then you take the scaffolding down or you take the basting stitch out of the garment. So this is basting thread here. <clears throat> it's very easy to use, it's very soft and because it's only a temporary stitch it's easy to break and it's easy to break for a reason so it can be t easily taken out of the uniform or the garment or the badge that you're holding it on. So I'll just quickly show you, demonstrate how you'd use the basting stitch. So as a military tailor, it comes in really handy, especially for putting badges onto uniforms. It just holds the badge in place before you um, machine sew it or hand sew it. Seamstresses or, I mean, other people use pins instead. You can use pins, but this is more of a traditional way of doing things. So I'll just demonstrate putting these two bits of fabric together you can imagine it's two parts of the garment that I was putting together before I'd machine stitch it so all you do is you pick up some of the cloth about just over a centimeter and a half and go round twice and that's like your anchor stitch so that's secured the two bits of fabric together then all you do just go along the material, just sewing like this. And then all that's doing is holding the two bits of fabric together nice and tightly. You can make the stitches smaller if you want. You just keep going along, picking a bit of the fabric up every centimeter and a half roughly you can do them bigger you can do them smaller you just get a feel of what's the right size to use on these stitches it all works i suppose the smaller the stitch the more secure the fabric or the badge will be when you're holding it down and then when you come to the end you always do a few stitches just to anchor it down so it doesn't come undone And then because it's nice and soft, you can just snap it off nice and easy. 
So just for argument's sakes, that's two pieces of trouser material on the seam. So I'd take that to my sewing machine now and I'd sew a machine line down the seam. And I know the fabric won't move at all. It's nicely held in place. That you can see it's formed a seam just with the basting stitch there. So imagine I've machine stitch now my seam like i said it's just so easy to use you just take it out dead easy it's dead quick to do as well and like i say this is a basting stitch so let's imagine now this was a, a uniform sleeve so just got a pair of corporal tapes here I should say a single chevron so in future i'll show you how to put these chevrons onto a uniform i.e the measurements of where it will go on the sleeve <clears throat> so all you do is get some more basting thread you can buy basting thread on the internet there are many haberdasheries that sell it i always use quite big needle when i'm using basting thread it's just easier to control like i said on previous videos i use sharps sharps needles because they're the best for tailoring in my opinion if you disagree please comment below i appreciate any comments or any information on my platform on this channel it's all good right so i want to fix this onto my uniform so you put a sleeve board or something hard inside the sleeve so when you sew into it you just hit in the back of the sleeve board opposed to the inside of the sleeve so you just start with putting a couple of stitches in here like so suppose it's about a centimeter and a half ish around there three stitches two stitches doesn't really matter as long as it anchors it down and then you just go along sort of every centimeter ish putting the holding stitch in and this will hold your chevron nice and tight in the right position so when you come to sew it for real machine stitch or hand stitch you'll know it's not going to move and it's going to be secured in the right position before you sew it. So I'll just put three stitches in the end there. But like I say, in future videos, I'll actually show you how to fit chevrons onto uniforms, but this is part of the process. This is the first part of it, being able to baste your chevron onto the uniform. Like I said before, you can use pins if you wanted to, but I just find this is quick and easy and it secures it really well onto the fabric there. So you can see it's pretty solid on there. It isn't gonna move. If you really wanna go mad, you could put more basting stitches at the top and bottom. So it's super tight here. Like I say, it's so important though when you're putting these basting stitches on that you're sewing onto something hard underneath because otherwise you'll just sew everything up and that would be no good. So I've just demonstrated there, just putting some more basting stitches on if you wanted to, to make it uber tight. And you put along the bottom if you really wanted to. But like I say, that's going nowhere, it's solid. So if you're an RQMS or you're fitting a RQMS badge like this one, you found the position on your uniform, just get your basting stitch. I'll just get some more. A lot of people hand stow these WO2 badges on, but 
if you can base them on to start with in the right position if you hand sew them or machine stitch them they have got a tendency of moving a little bit so if you base them down really tight you'll find that they won't move anywhere so i started putting a few basting stitches at the top you could go round the badge if you wanted to where it's a bit softer It's going to be really tight it's not going to move anywhere sometimes it's not suitable to put pins in because the badges are too thick or too awkward to get them in where basting stitch you'll always be able to get some stitches in so i've gone round the badge i'll put a couple in the center as well just to hold it even tighter and i'll just show you how solid this badge is on the fabric. So if you can imagine that's on the uniform that I'm sort of trying to move it, but it's not moving much. Another idea when you're doing these badges, but again, this is for a sort of a later video, is when you come to sew these badges on, if you can imagine that was a bit of chalk, you can just chalk mark around the badge. So as you're sewing it, you can just make sure that those points are meeting as you're sewing around so you know the badge isn't moving and if it just moves slightly off that point then you can just slightly re uh, move the badge to put it back so the marks match so you can even use it for if, if you've got a trf if you want to put on a combat shirt for example i've got a shirt here I can just show you before you come to a machine, sew it on or hand sew it on. You can just base the badge on. So just for argument's sakes, we'll just put this blue, red, blue badge on here. It's not in the right position. Don't worry about that. I'm just showing you how to base it on. Uh, you've probably noticed I've put a bit of wood inside the sleeve. That's called a sleeve board. So when I sew the basting stitch, it won't go through to the other side of the, the shirt. So it's a lot easier to use. If you haven't got a sleeve board, you can improvise, get some MDF or something, and just cut a reasonable size piece out, sort of sleeve size. It doesn't have to be that long or half the size. As long as you've got something hard on the inside, you'll be fine. So that's in the right position. So what I'll do, I'll just put a few basting stitches along the top of the badge. The first few stitches, do them quite tight. And then you'll know that it's not gonna move. So you could put some stitches at the top and then the bottom. I fancy going all the way around this one. So we'll put another stitch here. It's about every centimetre, centimetre and a half, doesn't really matter. You can put really small ones in if you want to. Just as you're basting it on, just bear in mind, you want to keep an eye on it being in the right position and not moving. So I'm just going to sew on the bottom of here. Just going around the badge, just keep moving it to make sure it's in the right position. Just need to move it a tiny bit. So I'll just put a couple stitches in at the end there to make sure it's in the right position. So that's just holding it in position. And you could take that to your sewing machine or hand sew it on, because you know it's in the right position. If you're hand sewing it on or machine stitching it as you're going around, just keep double checking that it's in the right position. So 
I think you've got the gist of how a basting stitch works now. So this is the first video for basic tailoring stitching. So I'm also gonna cover felling stitch, which is a stitch which is used to sew badges onto uniforms, or you can sew seams and pockets and different things with felling stitch. We're gonna do cross stitch, back stitch, um, and I think we're gonna do some buttonholes eventually when we really get good. So just for an example, on my B3 tailoring course, this wasn't the finished exam piece that I did, but it's like a replica of that. And when we made these oblong bits of material, we just learned all our basic hand stitching on here. So we've got um, the basting stitch here, the white stitch. So that was to hold it all together. This stitch here is the cross stitch there. We've got the back stitch there. The buttonholes all done by hand. We even made pockets as well. So, and these lines at the bottom here are just machine stitch. So I've hoped you've enjoyed this quick video on basting stitch and what it's used for. And like I say, I'm doing this because in the future when I do videos on tailoring jobs, I can say I'll go back and look at my basting stitch to get a more idea of how to do it. So like I say, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please subscribe if you've not subscribed already. I'm trying to grow the channel. I'm going to bring a lot of content about British medals, British military and tailoring jobs. So thanks again ever so much for watching and hopefully we'll catch you in the next one. Thanks, bye.